Hi everyone and welcome to yet another video called What the Jet and today we're going to be talking about false. Whenever we have a function that contains a constant operation, so let's have a function called m for now and let's have a variable and let's uh, let's do the following. Let's return to times x. So what we're going to see is we're going to see an optimization trick where we're going to just shift left. But when we have two times two times x, for example, what you're going to see, we're going to be actually shifting by two, not by uh, one, two times. So we just folded this into a number called four, because when we're going to do four, we're going to have the same operation. So the JIT compiler effectively folded these two constants into a single one. And that's good because that's an optimization technique. So that's, that's really cool. But you have to be aware that certain folds don't work as you'd expect and you have to be kind of wary about them because otherwise you're not going to get the performance that for example you're aiming for. So for example let's have another function called n and let's use this. Let's return x times 2 times 2. So everything just got reversed and as you can see the JIT compiler didn't fold these and it just generated two shifts for this two and this two. So in the first example, we folded stuff and in the second example, we didn't. So this is, uh, this is interesting, right? And why this happens? Well, first of all, the JIT compiler will always fold from the left to the right when you have const. So the cons have to be on the left hand side, not on the right hand side. And why is that? What's the reason behind this, right? Well, the reason behind this is correctness most of the time. It could be probably performance because you can imagine that left folding is easier than right folding, but I'm going to bet that it's probably not performance, but correctness because what's going to happen in this example if you have two times two then you have four and you can multiply that that by x and you're done so you can fold these two without any problems but if you have a x which could be a max value of integer for example you're going to overflow this and you're going to multiply this by two so you might not get the same results as in this version here. And there could be probably other aspects to correctness that uh, you can imagine by having an int variable here. So probably that's the reason why we don't fold uh, in, this, uh, in this example here, right? So the takeaway here is that uh, we have to know what gets folded and why and where it gets folded in order to be able to use these optimization techniques to its fullest potential. So that's, that's why. All right. So that was const folding, but now let's transition to something different. Let's transition to a technique called function folding. So let's have a function called division where we're going to have two arguments X and Y, and so we're just going to return x divided by y, but it would be good to check first if x is zero. And if it is, let's throw a new exception because that's a good thing to do. So what we have here is we have a function that generated a bunch of, you know, assembly instructions, a bunch of checks. It looks really scary and it looks really complicated, but that's not the thing that we should focus now. So this function still is really simple and it should be automatically inlined in every single case. So let's, let's do it because the inlining bit is going to be important here. So let's have yet another function that's going to use our division. So let's have a function called m1, which will return a division. Uh, let's divide 10 by five, for example, right? So that function got inlined, but because it got inlined, the JIT will actually see that these two arguments are consts. So there's not really, not really a reason in to be able to, you know, to do anything with this function here because we can just divide and we can just divide these two const and return the result and bake that result in into the assembly code. And that's going to be it. So that's one of the interesting optimization tricks that JIT can do for you. And it's, it's sort of uh, like constant folding as well, because 
these are the two consts and what we just have to do is we just have to apply this uh, method here we know that y is never going to be zero and that's good so we can fold this into a constant operation but let's not stop there let's continue let's complicate this function a bit and let's see what we're gonna get so let's have a m2 where we're gonna have a single argument and let me return the division of x by 5 so what we can see here is that we now can apply an optimization trick so we can take this again because remember this is going to be probably inline right so we can take this we know that y is a const so we can just get rid of this and if we have a variable divided by a const we can use a shift trick so this is a shift trick because we don't want to do a division we can do a multiplication with shift in order to be able to optimize the division if we know that uh, we're dividing by a constant number so i've talked about these sort of tricks in my previous video called um, what the jet integer arithmetic so you can check it out i'm going to leave a link in the description but what you have to remember that it's an optimization trick so again we didn't you know even do even inline this function we just optimize this operation here and everything is okay but it's really crucial to know that it had to be inlineable this function right in order to be able to do that so let's have let's complicate this even further so now i'm going to have a method called n3 which will take two arguments x and y and what we're going to do now is we're going to return a division of x and y this time around and as you can probably tell by the assembly that got generated that this function here is just an inline of the division function they're pretty identical so what happened is if we don't know the arguments they're not const we cannot do any optimizations we cannot do any folding at all so we just have to inline this and be done with it but as you can see, if we know something about the arguments of the function, if we know that we have certain cons that we can use to be able to optimize our function calls, then JIT is going to do that automatically. And that's really good. So that's pretty awesome. And, you know, because these just happen and our code will get faster because of that. So now let me show you one of the examples where we would probably expect something to get folded, but it's not folded. So let's have another function called increment. Let's take an X as an argument and let's do the following thing. Let's just increment X a bunch of times. And now let's return X. So as you can see, we just incremented a register four times and that's it. What we could have done is we could just take this register and add four to it and just return. And that will be perfectly fine. So this didn't get folded for some reason. And it's probably not because of the optimizations tricks that we can do here because it's not really worth the time and increment we're incrementing the same register so that's not going to have any benefit probably. So it's just an probably an omission. I'm not sure why it didn't, it didn't get folded. But let me show you a different implementation of LLVM, it's C++, and let's see how C++ tries to solve this particular problem. So let's switch tabs to the Compiler Explorer, and this supports C++ amongst other languages, but we're now just going to focus on C++. And let me do the same thing. So I'm going to increment X a bunch of times, and let's return X. So as you can see, we just loaded an effective address to, to the register and we just did x plus 4 and we're gonna, just going to return. So yeah, this got optimized away, but the JIT version for some reason didn't. So it's something to, to remember that not all things are foldable currently. Maybe that's going to get patched, maybe not, we're going to see but you have to you have to be aware of some of these things not happening and certain things happening or certain things not happening in the way you would like 
So that's that's another thing to key, to keep in mind. If you got value out of this video, you know, like and subscribe, leave a comment if you would like to see something tested in the next video. And that's pretty much it for this one. So um, thank you and see you next time. You know, bye.